In anticipation of the 2023 election, some prominent Nigerians formed a new political party. And the conflict between federal lawmakers and Minister of State for Labor, Employment and Productivity, Festus Kiyamu, takes a new turn. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladendi. Ahead of the 2023 general election, 30 prominent Nigerian activists, academics, and other professionals have formed a new political movement called National Consultative Front, NCF. Among members of the 30-member steering committee for the NCF are a former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Gali Narhaba, a former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, Fem uh, uh, f f former Deputy Governor of Central Bank, we also have Femi Falano in the list. We have Obiangeli Ezekwesili, Senator Shehu Sani. We also have Olisa Bakoba and others. Can we cross our fingers in hope that this new party won't end like the force of 2019? Joining us to discuss this is Professor Anthony Kila, a member of the NCL. You're welcome. And also Senator Shehu Sani, a member of this uh, team too, via Zoom. You're welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for Thank having you, me. Okay, let me start with uh, Professor Kila. Um, I understand that uh, this group was formed yesterday. Uh, no thanks to COVID-19. Probably it would have been a, a, a big uh, event where we have all the media in present. But thank God for technology, we are able to get this information. Can you tell us more about this, we, we, about this new front that is being formed? One clear question a lot of people are asking, is this a new party or they are just going to be a pressure group? But I think as much as one tries, the name says a lot. A consultative front is a platform um, where leaders of thought and people of conscience with um, a good track record and like minds come together to review what the country is and to propose a way forward. Um, one of the things that combines most of the people inside that group is the understanding that what we have today is a system that does not work. And if that system does not work, the problem of the system is beyond one individual, whether good or bad, and it's beyond one party. Well, I was going to say good or bad, but these parties are really the same, you know, the main parties. You see people walking in and out of them. The only few people, like my, my friends in the show, Sanita, they're not walking in and out of them. I have to go to somewhere that's almost non-existent. In the mind of people, <laughs> the main, the major, and which is a shame because actually, that is that was a great party. We were a country of history. It's probably the oldest party that has been there consistently. But let's leave that aside. Where we are today is that the two major political parties are really interchangeable. They're interchangeable naturally because people are greedy and they lack vision, but also because there is no real difference between them, and also because. The problem is beyond them. So we say to ourselves, let us sit together, not as politicians, but as citizens, and look at what the problem of our country is. We live in a country where, I said this quickly, where the first three words we say to each other, we the people, are not true. Our constitution says we the people, but that, that's the first lie we say. And you can see what happens when you build lies upon lies upon lies, how there is no good intention that can solve it unless you really sit down and recreate it. Okay. That is what we're about to do. Okay. I'll come back to you. Uh, you've actually opened a lot of uh, vista of issues that we'll be talking about. Let me go to Senator Sani. Uh, he just made a reference to your kind of person, and probably I should also put it on record, that some of us miss 
your contribution on the floor of the Red Chamber. But let's get down to the real issue. Now, they've been able to establish or they've made a position that these two parties is not the, I mean, we shouldn't look at their direction. You came from some of these, I mean, one of these two parties, at least, becoming a senator. Uh, will you share that opinion, too? Um, thank you again for having me here. Well, first and foremost, I must make this clarification. I am not, I wasn't that fully briefed about the consultative uh, forum, but I share the spirit, the sentiment, the principles, and the convictions of all my comrades who are there, because I believe that uh, they know what befits me and they know where I can fit in. So I share. The, the resolution that was reached. But having said that, I believe that such a platform is important and significant at this hour because actually the two main political parties are one and the same. You can easily uh, switch from A to B without noticing any significant difference. The difference is that one is in power and one is out of power. So uh, looking at the problems this country is be faced with, they need to have a new platform, a new front, a new forum that will address the myriads of socioeconomic and political challenges and structural challenges that be facing our United States is very important and very significant. And if we don't do that, we will still be juggling from where we come from to where we have never been and where we will never be. Uh, let me go back to Professor Killer. Mr. Professor Killer, I have a, a bit of uh, clarification I need to make. Uh, one of the reasons why we're speaking to some of the names on the list is because we want to also confirm whether they are fully briefed. And we just listened to Senator Sani saying that it wasn't fully briefed. Let me read a, a text message that we had with... Uh, um, Olisa Bakoba, one of the prominent names on that list. And this was an invitation from a colleague who wanted him to be on the show. And reading it, uh, let me just uh, read it to you and if it can be displayed on the screen. It said, good evening, sir. My name is Amaka Okoye from Plox TV Africa. This is a request to be a part of our news. And the response is, sorry, I am not part of the group as I wasn't consulted. Uh, as I wasn't consulted. Uh, what could be the issue here? Are you being a member now? Were you properly briefed about it just the way uh, Senator Sani said he wasn't properly briefed before we go to the next conversation? I think, um, the I think it's a consultative forum. Um, what you got, what attracted you to create a program around was a communique, wasn't it? Yes. Well, that, that's the point. You get a communique because a meeting has been held. And those, is, those um, are the resolutions of such a meeting. It's as simple as that. A consultative forum is continuous consultation. You might feel you've not been consulted enough. Ideally, you should be saying it to your comrades inside the house. But well, you know, I don't know if he wanted you to publicize his text or not. I refer to the text of Olisa Bakova. You look into that. Um, it's a consultative forum. Our levels of need of consultations differ. As a teacher, I tell you that some students need one example, others need five examples to understand the topic of the day. So, you know, it depends on where you are and how you feel. I do not think that's an issue. I think we need to go beyond names. It's, uh, I'm sure it's, a, it's, a, it's effective. But I think it's an Prof. old, archaic, Prof. unlocked Prof. habit. If, if I can interject, on... Prof, if I can interject, Sorry? just if I can quickly yes, interject, do. I will allow you continue. If I can quickly interject, no, we, do. It's not a problem. we had please a conversation. Do. We had a conversation with Professor Utomi, and he was fully, you know, in support of the conversation. He even gave us a whole lot of points about the plans. So that's why we needed to be sure because it was the major headline. And we needed to be it's sure right. because this is a very powerful list of Nigerians. It's all right. I mean, look, to each his own. You can 
If that is the interest, that's fine. That's the editorial side. There's nothing wrong with it. I propose that it is time we go beyond the names. Okay. I propose that the Nigeria of the, that the world of the future will be about ideas, not individuals. Good. We do not need a messiah to solve our problems. We need brilliant minds who can be anonymous. The biggest newspapers in the world, you do not know the names there. It is what they write that attracts you to them. You do not know the name of who created the best trains from Abuja to Kaduna, or who, you don't see the names there. It is the efficiency of it. I argue that we need to go beyond personal names and focus on issues to say, is our country safe or not? What is, I, what is the idea to solve the problem of security okay. before going to who's behind it? Of course you want to go who's behind it, but maybe the what before the who is my position. Beautiful. And trust me, it's just an editorial angle. It's legitimate. OK, good. Can we look at uh, the history? We've had groups like this. I remember having this, having this chat with Professor uh, Pat Tutumi that it was part of a lot of progressives just to rescue the nation. But it appears the voters are not looking in their direction. So what will change this time around? You see, endeavors are not based on the possibility of success. It is based on the need to do it. I keep telling Nigerians, you vote for people because, not because they can't win, but because you think they're the right people to vote for. We need to change our mindset. There is a saying in some parts of this um, country where I come from that as long as there is lice in the hair and the clothes, there will be blood on the finger. It's not about how many times you've done it or who's doing it. The question is, is the problem there? Do you need to look at the solution? That's what it doesn't, the, you, um, politicians, political analysts, strategists, especially politicians, especially politics, it's not about prediction. It's about sitting down and doing the right thing. I understand that in a society that's been bust aside, where the prosaic overrules poetry and the mundane dominates the noble, we always think, is it possible to win or lose? Are they doing it again? No. There are some people in this country, it might be hard to believe, who don't live of politics, but live for politics, for the goodness of what is right, who follow their conscience. So it's not a game. It's not one team versus one thing, two, one, one, one draw. It's about, it is not right for the country not to be safe. It is not right for people not to feel proud okay. of where they come from. Thank you for that clarity. Uh, so back to you, Senator. Uh, how do we explain the, the motive of this group? Because one of the messages, one of the things in the communique is that they want to rescue the nation from the brink. So how do we achieve that? You know, it, it, from, from the look of things, it appears the voice of uh, opposition, the voice of activists is usually drowned with some kind of petty politics of those people in power. Um, thank you again. Well, first of all, I believe if there was no need for activists to regroup, there could not have been a regrouping. But the reality of our country today calls for that. And that is why I believe that uh, men and women of ideas, of principles, of conviction at this time need to save, step forward and rescue the country. It is clear to us and to everyone that uh, five years into government, the existing political ruling elite have been unable to address the wrongs, the challenges, the problems, and the crisis of the Nigerian state that was used as a banner for them to mount to power. So having a thought force, it depends on what that thought force wants to be, either to be a pressure group or to be uh, a political party. But the need for activists to regroup and rescue our country uh, is as important as the survival of the country as a whole. Uh, look at what is happening from our own part of the country. People are killed every day, and uh, in their hundreds and in their thousands. 
and the government has lost focus and ideas on how to address it. Each time people are kidnapped and killed by bandits in this northwestern part of the country, they are will, you will hear of the president uh, having a closed-door meeting with security agencies and then one chief of staff moving from Abuja to relocating. And the cycle continues. And it appears that they don't have any fresh ideas on how they can address the problem. Look at other issues since they come to power. Whether it's corruption, whether it's power, whether it's security, whether it's uh, restructuring, they have virtually been unable to do anything. So having a new platform with people with fresh ideas, with new thinking, will uh, re-electrify the hope of Nigerians uh, for us to restart again, uh, reset the country, and then move forward. Uh, the platform is made up of credible Nigerians, people who have sacrificed their lives, have struggled to restore democracy in, to Nigeria. And uh, I know the challenges ahead mostly will have to be where do we move from here? The two dominant political parties are a force that cannot easily be removed. But I believe with faith, with mobilization, with action, with establishing the necessary structure, uh, there will be a light at the end of the day. Okay, Senator, let me stay with you before I go back to uh, Prof here in Lagos. Uh, uh, you raised something clear, and uh, some people are watching, and I can imagine if they are given opportunity to ask questions, one of the questions they might probably ask is, we've had activists joining politics, and they changed. Maybe not in your own case. Uh, if, if time will permit me, I might be strong enough to mention names. A lot of people came into power, the likes of uh, Oshomole. People believe that this is not the activist we know. So what happens? How are we sure that this is a matter of armchair criticism and not really when you are given opportunity to be in power and you might just be like the same of the same? Well, you see, um, politics and activism are two different things, but okay. you can put the two together. Uh, in activism, you are driven by principles, convictions, noble ideas, and standards of beliefs, faiths that are clearly verified. But in politics, you are bound to, most times, if you have to survive, you have to compromise some of your principles, you have to associate with people whom ordinarily you couldn't have associated with. You have to do things that sometimes are unethical in order for you to survive. You have to live with strange bedfellows and uh, get yourself involved in so many things that as, uh, as an ordinary, ideal human being, you should not have been involved in it. But if you now go into politics... Uh, with principles, with conviction, and you find yourself in a forest of people that are strange, certainly you will stand out and you will be in constant conflict with them. Uh, the case of some of us is that when I went to the Senate, my prayer has always been, let me leave this Senate with the same principle, ideals, reputation, and ideas that have been known with before I was there. And the moment you go into the Senate saying you're going to leave, going to the public office, you're going to leave by your ideals, by your convictions, then you are certainly going to go into conflict with people who don't share that. And uh, for those who want to survive, certainly you will see a complete transformation from what you used to know them to what they have become, which is the case of some of the persons which you have just mentioned. The ruling class are very conscious of their positions, their privileges, their interests, they always protect it. And any person who they see meddle into that and trying to undermine it, they is declared as an enemy. So uh, I believe that if you are going to have a true progressive Nigeria, then the real progressive, real Democrats, people of conviction need to come together and then see what they can do. That is why after we left the APC, and then uh, most of our people are moving to PDP. Then my problem is that I have never been there. I don't know people there. And I don't want to end up moving from Sodom and then end up in Gomorrah. <laughs> so I said, let me go to where the party of my parents, of my history. That's why I went to PRP. 
people's attention. So the party, we don't have money, we don't have structure, but we have history and we have honor. And we believe that ideas like this that came from this consultative forum has been, uh, as it has started now, I think is good. And it is, not too, it is not too early to do that. Because if we are certainly going to create a change in 2023, this is the time to start it. Okay, this is the time to start. And back to you, Prof. If you want to throw more light on that, looking at uh, activism and politics, because we have some politicians in the list. We have people who have even gone into politics and out of it, like uh, Senator She Usani. We also have people who have tried their hands in becoming the president of this country and probably didn't get it. So uh, uh, can you tell us more on how you intend to, you know, draw this line and how you intend to make sure that uh, the ideals and the principle of the front are kept? I think let me start by saying that I care about people, but I place, I place my life on ideas, not individuals. I do not believe in people. I believe in ideas. When I deal with people, I believe in agreements. I do not have heroes and I do not worship idols. And part of the errors we have made in this country is that we've turned the country to a country of orphans, where people call their political associates their fathers. Those, quite frankly, are sort of annoying behaviors that we've turned to our way of life. Now, when you deal with people in a civic way, before it becomes even civil, in a civic way, you agree what binds you together. Whether you are a politician, you are an activist, you are a singer, or you are religious, I really do not care about it. We come into the room and we identify the 10 things we want to do together and we talk about when to do it, who's going to do it, and how to go about it. We have an issue of education of civic in this country. You see, what we're calling democracy is far away from democracy. In democracy, there is no deference. It doesn't mean you're going to be rude to people. It just means that the idea is that you're not looking for a father. We have this maniac of your excellency, your father did that, this person is my father, that person is the father of the nation. My father is dead. Every other person is a political associate. You might defer to him for his age, but that is not the issue. So it is not a matter of, do we hope people will do well? No. We have to create citizens who know their right, who understand what their duty is, and their first duty is to hold to account everybody they deal with. It is not the goodness of politicians or the kindness of the heart of activists that our roads will be built. It is our ability to know what we want, get people who are going to do it, and hold them to account for doing it. The way forward for a new order in this land is for people to get up and pick up their destiny by themselves. There is enough of vicarious way of living. If we don't do that, it's going to be the old joke. And that is why sections of the country are feeling disaffected by the whole country. That is why chunks of nations that make up this country are thinking, maybe it's time to go and start something totally new. Because what they've had so far for over 100 years is not working for the child of nobody. It's not working for people who are not willing to grovel. We'll come back to get your final thought on this way forward. So, Senator Sani, while you're yet considering um, becoming a full member of the NCF, um, how strategic do you think they need to operate, you know, to become a voice, to really achieve these goals? Like I record, we've had progressives, we've had thought force, different kinds of names in the past. And it appears they just fell like pack of cats. We see some of them going to join a party. We see some of them, you know, probably losing focus. So how strategic and how do you think they need to operate as a political party or as a pressure group? Well, um, what became of the decision of the group will determine what strategy they need to use. If you are going to be if you, are going to be, if you are going to be a pressure group, uh, the kind of structure you will uh, install in place nationwide uh, is different from 
being a political party that wants to win an election. At least I had the privilege of uh, being in a political party that won election and the one that lost election. I also had the history of coming from activism. And if, if the, the decision of the group will now make it possible uh, for what needs to be done, if it is a pressure group, then people from all political parties uh, can come into it and then the ideas, uh, the principles and the focus is clear. This is what we want to do. Uh, but if it's going to be a political party, then the focus will be how do we capture uh, political power? And then the kind of composition of people we, that that group will use are not uh, as uh, the one we will have in the pressure group. So um, these some discussions as far as the one that has to do with where the direction of the group is going to be uh, is one that will have to be by consensus within the members and then from there. But as now, uh, the group has uh, publicized itself. Uh, some of us that are not uh, properly uh, briefed, I believe that as comrades, they will reach out to us. And from all I have read, uh, there is not one sentence that I don't share from what they have written. So the only problem will be uh, let me just know more about what is on, and then we will simply fall in line. Thank you. And uh, yes. Thank you so much, Senator Shea Usoni, for your time. But let's continue and see this as it unfolds. And that, that will be the end of the segment. Once again, thank you, Professor Anthony Kila, a professor of strategy and development, and it's also the Center Director for Advanced and professional studies. Thank you for your time. And once again, thank you, Senator Shehusoni, for your time. We can see that you were in transit and you had to stop to be part of this conversation. Thank you so much. We will take a break, and when we come back, we'll be looking at the conflict between the federal lawmakers and the Minister of State for Labor, Employment, and Productivity, Festus Kiyamu. We'll be right back.